Africa Day. Now, Africans across the continent are marking the day in various ways. And in terms of European political practice in Africa, all the colonized countries share similar attributes. The impact that colonization had on Africa has been described as both good and bad. The African population was not satisfied with how the Europeans imposed their governing system without proper representation, as the colonial governments did not allow popular participation, and the small political elite made all political decisions with little or no input from the African population. Decades after, not much has changed in the continent's political landscape. As the world celebrates Africa Day, New Central's Neo Money gives an account of Africa's political journey since colonization. In the 17th century, European countries scrambled for and petitioned Africa. This continued until around 1905, by which time all the lands and resources of the continent of Africa had been completely divided and colonized by European countries. The only countries that couldn't be colonized due to strong resistance by the indigents were Ethiopia and Liberia, which were places for freed slaves from the Americas. The purpose of this conquest, like most conquests in history, was to make money for the conquerors. The principal power involved in the modern colonization of Africa are Britain, France, Germany, Portugal, Spain and Italy. I'm speaking from Iwo Jima. The struggle for independence started after World War II. This led to the independence of the Union of South Africa in 1931 through negotiations with the British Empire and Libya in 1951 from Italy, followed by others in the late 1950s. The road to African independence was very hard and tortuous, often through bloody fights, revolts and assassinations. The peak year for independence came in 1960, when about 17 countries gained independence. These Independence Days are now celebrated as National Day holidays in most countries of Africa. While the Universal Franchise was granted just before or immediately after independence, economic policies had not been formulated. From now on, there is a new African in the world. That new African is ready to fight his own battle. The expectations of the electorate heightened by promises made during the independence struggle far exceeded the government's capacity to provide. The newly independent state had an unsettled political culture. Not only had the political leadership next to no experience in operating a governmental system on a national scale, the institutions such as parties, parliament and civil services through which they had to work were also relatively new and weak. Accounting for the dramatic and significant development on the continent's political terrain in the last decade. Widespread constitutional reforms that resulted either in the amendment of existing constitutions or the production of entirely new ones. The restoration of multi party politics and organization of multi party elections, the embrace of the notion of independent electoral commissions. The achievement by a significant number of countries of a peaceful alternation of power between ruling parties and their opponents, and the organization of repeat elections have been identified by some as critical indicators of democratic consolidation and are changes designed to open up the political space and in so doing allow for greater competition in the struggle for political power. Politics is not about last year. Politics is about today about tomorrow. Before colonization, there were many forms of government in Africa, ranging from powerful empires to decentralized groups of pastoralists and hunters. The colonization of Africa through Europe has, however, brought about many forms of government that are still visible today. Of the 486 attempted or successful coups carried out around the world since 1950, Africa has seen 214 the most of any region, with 106 of them successful and an average of less than one successful coup per year. The latest power grabs in Africa has raised concerns that the region could be backsliding from its progress towards greater democracy. Irrespective of the interpretative weight which may be placed on the changes which have occurred in the African political landscape, politics in Africa is still a work in progress as the continent grapples with the prolonged economic crisis, 
the widespread resorts to violence and arms, the emergence of a diaspora of recent migrants from Africa and clamor to secure international recognition, amongst others. Ni Omani, New Central.